Chapter 16. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 12 and verse 13. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with that of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him. For this is he. Arise, anoint him. For this is he. The Lord was looking for a man. A man that will be able to deliver the people of God from the harassment of the Philistines. The Lord was looking for a man. A man that will stand as a representative of the Lord both in the nation of the people of God and among or in front the enemies of the people of God and eventually found David and then he said arise Samuel and pour the anointing oil on him because this is he and the Lord can find you today as a man and the Lord can find you today as a woman and the Lord can say, this is he, the hope of your community, the hope of people around you. This is she, the one the Lord has been looking for, the one that will mop the ground, and the one that will, uh, that will rout the enemy, the one that will conquer the six that face the people of God. This is he what are we saying about david number one he was called number two he was chosen number three he was anointed those three words and those three things that took place in the life of david called chosen and anointed how important that is the anointing came upon him. And as the anointing came upon him, you, that's what I've read to you in 1 Samuel chapter 16. And then in the very next chapter, we find Goliath standing at the gate between him and the fulfillment of his calling. And I'm going to tell you today, anytime the Lord calls and chooses and anoints, there will be something standing between you and the fulfillment of that calling that thing you'll find out if you have not found out already will want to challenge the call of god upon your life called you are called to repentance called you are called to righteousness called you are called to redemption and as the lord calls you and then you respond to that call of god then you are chosen the people who are chosen are the people who respond to the call. And then as the calls and chooses, then he says, don't go yet. For you to be able to do everything the Lord has called you to do, right in front of you, there is something that you need. That is the anointing of the Spirit of God. We're told in verse 13 of that first Samuel, chapter 16, verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. The Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. As you have seen, a man called, 
chosen and anointed. I yet to understand the anointing does not make you to be or to sleep on a bed of roses for the rest of your life. The anointing actually gets you up and makes you to be able to face what will try to challenge the call of God in your life. What will challenge the choice of God in your life? What will challenge the anointing of God upon your life? That's why you find chapter 17 following immediately after chapter 16. Called, chosen, and anointed. That anointing will be challenged. Yes, I think that's why many people are running about. You don't understand that when the anointing comes upon your life, some challenges come, some difficulties come, some Philistines come, some Goliaths come. And as a result of their coming, that's why many people abandon the anointing they have, the calling they have, the choice they have. And then they're going about looking for another thing. Understand, the anointing will always be challenged. Goliath was coming against him now. And if you overcame this Goliath, that will open the door for him to overcome all the other enemies. Goliath was standing at the gate, overcoming Goliath. In this chapter 17 of 1 Samuel, will open the door for a lifetime of overcoming. On the other hand, being defeated by Goliath, at this time, will end his life, will end his ministry, will end every prospect, every possibility of success in the future in his life. That's why this gateway into the blessing, this gateway into the victory, this gateway into the overcomer's life was very important for David and it's very important for you and for me, the unconquerable David. What made him to be unconquerable? I'm going to look at this message under three subtitles. Number one, the characteristics of unconquerable David. Point number two, the combatants against unconquerable David. Number three, conquering like unconquerable David. I come to number one, the characteristics of unconquerable David. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. Acts, chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 22. Acts, chapter 13, verse 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David. When he had removed Saul, he raised up unto them David. Now we know that God is no respecter of persons. God is no respecter of faces. God is no respecter of titles. God is no respecter of tribes. God is no respecter of people. If he removed Saul and he put David, there must be a reason. And it's very simple. What he found in David, he didn't find in Saul. That's why he removed him. And then he brought on David. That's what God always does. God says, this is what I'm looking for. That's the quality I'm looking for. These are the characteristics I'm looking for. And it doesn't matter. Coming from any tribe coming from any community, coming from any nation, coming from any group of people, this is what I'm looking for. And whatever he sees those qualities and those characteristics, he makes his choice. And it says in that verse 22, when he had removed Saul, he raised up unto them David to be their king to whom he also gave testimony 
and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. That's what he was looking for. He was looking for a man that will not fulfill, number one, the will of self. Number two, the will of Satan. Number three, the will of society. He will not be a man that society could dribble around. He will not be a man that society will tie a rope around his waist and be dragging him in any direction they pleased. But he'll be a man not under the control of self, not under the control of Satan, not under the control of society. He said, I have found David. It's like the Lord was searching all the tribes of Israel. And then he came to the tribe of Judah. And then he came to the house of Jesse. And then he pinpointed the man. That's my man. That's my man. He will not be controlled by self. He will not be controlled by Satan. He will not be controlled by society. I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. It's not his name. It's not his title. It's the condition of his heart. It's not his education. It's not his beauty. It's not his physique. Is a heart. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God does not look on the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. And when he finds a man whose heart is aligned to the will of God, whose heart is aligned to the word of God, he says, I have found a man after my own heart who will fulfill all my will you understand part of the will of god will not be too simple will not be too easy but the lord was saying this man is not going to be looking at how high how great how difficult the challenges are he will put his heart his mind to fulfilling all my will He'll not be fulfilling my will only when he's happy. He'll be fulfilling my will every time, every moment, all the days of his life. He will not be fulfilling my will only when things go his own way and things are just as he expects. But when things are what he doesn't expect, and conditions and uh, the direction of things around him they go in a way he wasn't expecting and yet he'll make up his mind i am a man after god's heart and i will fulfill all the will of god if that's your mind today if that's your heart today then god can say i found a man i found a woman after my heart who will fulfill all my will look at verse 36 in verse 36 for david after he had searched his own generation by the will of god that's it serving your generation not by the will of self this is how i like to do it this is what i will do this is a place i will go and this is the thing i can do and if they don't give me this to do finish i won't do any other thing that's the will of self it served his own generation not by the will of society it served in those generation by the will of god that's what god is looking at come back to first samuel chapter 13. in first samuel chapter 13 verse 14 but now thy kingdom shall not continue again talking to Saul talking to Saul now thy kingdom shall not continue would you look up here for a moment you see there are many people that do not understand the word of God and you know in this church we all say we don't believe it in eternal security for salvation 
what that means is there are people that say once you are saved you're always forever saved that's not bible that's the doctrine of calvin that's calvinistic but the bible teaches there is only conditional security you are saved and then you keep on relying on the grace of god you keep on relying on the strength of the lord from within so as to walk and to live in the will of god in the word of god conditional security not eternal security for salvation yet in this church there are people that appear to believe eternal security not for salvation but eternal security in service not for salvation but for service but the word of god is telling us there is no eternal security for salvation there is no eternal security for service and when god chose saul if there were eternal security he would not have removed him but he removed him because there's no eternal security in the service of the lord that's why if you are working for the lord and the lord has chosen you he wants you to have the characteristic of abiding in the word of God, abiding in the will of God, abiding in the path of righteousness. If you sin, if you go after the will of sin, or go after the will of Satan, or go after the will of society, and you abandon the will of God, the consequence is he will act to you like he acted to Saul. It says in the verse 14, but now that kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him, a man at his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Look at Psalm 40. And you see this man at a God's heart. And you see the devotion of his heart, the decision of his heart, the dedication of his life. Psalm 40, as you look at the top of that psalm, you see it's a psalm of David. What did he say? Verse 8. In verse 8, I delight to do thy will. O oh my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. I delight to do thy will. I rejoice to do thy will. You can tell where his heart was. Psalm 143 verse 10. Psalm 143. Reading from verse 10. Teach me to do thy will.